we're going to look at another non-parametric test. This is the Kruskal-Wallis test. Um, this is like the ANOVA where you have three or more um, different populations, but in this case, once again, with non-parametric, uh, we don't have to assume normality, which we have to with ANOVA. So what you do with this test is you have three or more populations. In this case, I only have three. And our test is we want to see are the populations the same, are they identical, or is at least one population different. And this follows a chi-square. So you're going to see I'm going to use the chi-square for the critical value. But instead of actually using the data like, like we did on the Mann-Whitney, we're going to rank these once again. And we're going to do our test based on the ranking. So if, hopefully you watched the Mann-Whitney. What I did is I just moved these over here somewhere. I need to keep my group names. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank these, and I just find it e hello. I just find it easier to do this way instead of trying to write it out on paper with ranking them. So here, and then oops, I forgot to highlight all that, and then here. All right, so I'm going to put these in order from smallest to largest. So data sort, and I want to sort by column F. And now I just start ranking. And remember that if you see doubles um, or even triples, okay, that you actually have to average those values. So, so far, everything looks good. One, two, three, four, five. Uh-oh, I see 29 and 29. So I would average six and seven. Then I actually see 30 and 30. So this was 6 and 7 average, so this will be 8 and 9 averaged. And so now I'm at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so I don't think I saw any more doubles in there. All right, so from here, I want to get totals of the groups. And that's what you're going to see. This, this piece is... I do it in pieces is a piece of the actual, my actual test statistic, my K statistic. And so this top part up here just says actually total each group and then square it divided by the number in that group and do it for each one of the groups. Okay. And then sum all those up. So let's put these back in group order. So group by, uh oh by H. Uh-oh. <laughs> if I could click H, there we go, third time's charm. And so from here, oh, I don't want to group by H. What are you doing? Send it group by G, by group. Okay. So from here now, I want to get a total of G1, and then of course I want the count. Then I want to get a total of G2 and the count, and then a total of G3 and the count. So I just sum the ranks for G1, and then I count, oops, I count to see how many are in G1. Then I get a total of the ranks for G2, right here. And I get a count of how many is actually in G2 right there. And then finally, I'm going to sum the ranks for G3 and then get a count. So like I said, if you watch the Man Whitney, I'm just doing the same thing, right? So I just ranked them and I got all my different counts. All right. So. From here now, I just want to get, I'm just going to do this in two steps. So I want to get the sum, okay, this piece, and then I will end up putting it. So notice this is that piece right there. All right, so what I need to do then is I need to take each total, each sum for each group, square it, and divide by how many is in that group. Do the next one, the 45, square it and divide by how many is in the group. And then finally, the last one, square it and divide by how many is in the group. All right, and now I want to actually sum all of these. 
and now I can put that in my formula. So now I'm going to actually get my K test statistic and I'm going to do it just by watching, looking at this formula here. So it says take, oh, I need one more thing. So N is the sum of all the N1, N2, N3, in other words, the total. So I could either just count all of those on the left or just sum these values. So I'm going to hold control down, sum that one, sum that one, and I get 18. All right, so I need it in there. So looking at the formula, 12 <clears throat> divided by, open a parenthesis for the denominator, n times n plus 1, close that, close the denominator, times my sum, that piece right there, and then minus 3 times my n plus 1. So that's my formula. All right, so there's my test statistic. So just as we do in every single hypothesis test, I want to see if this falls in the actual critical region. Well, if you remember, I mentioned that the Kruskal-Wallace follows a chi-square, so I'm going to end up actually getting the chi-square. I'm going to use, in this case, an alpha of 0 0.1. The degrees of freedom are found by taking the number of groups, okay, so that's what they call C, is the number of groups, minus 1. So I can see there's three groups, so the degrees of freedom would be 2. And then finally, I'm going to get my chi-square value, and I do this with the chi-square inverse and I want to the right, my probability 0 0.05 and my degrees of freedom. Okay, so nothing new with the chi-square um, critical value. And so I get 5.99 for my critical value, which is definitely larger than my test statistic. So my test statistic did not fall in the critical region. Therefore, I cannot, I fail to reject the null and I say that the three populations are identical. And that's that.